Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Yes, I know we don't normally get a Warships or a Tanks video on a Wednesday, but I was malingering yesterday, wasn't I? As somebody in the comments very eloquently put it, I got some limp-wristed fluffy ammo to sign my biff chit. <laughs> and I'm afraid if you're not in the British military, well, you can probably figure out what that means. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm back. I'm feeling quite a bit better, actually. And today's video is something of a cautionary tale. Because we off well, it doesn't happen often, but we do feature the occasional replay from the likes of Flambass and his accomplice, Mr. Gibbons, where they find themselves on the Two Brothers map in the most ridiculously inappropriate ships for the task and sail straight down the middle, usually with hilarious results. However, you have to understand that they are cherry-picking their results. They don't send in the battles where they sail down the middle in Two Brothers in hilariously inappropriate ships and get their asses handed to them. That sort of thing usually doesn't make it onto YouTube. And the reason is because sailing down the middle in Two Brothers right at the start of the battle is an incredibly stupid thing to do. And that's why today's video is something of a cautionary tale because it's going to show you what you can expect to happen if you decide to sail down the middle on Two Brothers. Regardless of how appropriate or inappropriate you think your ship might be, and particularly if you do it right at the start of a match. Now Rapture 70 here, in the Russian, or more accurately Soviet, Tier 7 battleship, the Vladivostok, is not quite dumb enough to sail straight down the middle of Two Brothers right at the start of the match but there are going to be plenty of people in this battle who are. So while Rapture 70 is introducing the enemy Karga to his uh, medium range AA aura, let's just take a quick look at the matchmaking. I don't know if you saw it at the beginning of the video. There is an Asashio on the enemy team. Now the thing about the Asashio is it has deep water torpedoes, but they're not the same kind of deep water torpedoes that the Pan-Asians get. See, the gimmick with deep water torpedoes, and I realise most of you know this, but for the benefit of those of you who don't actually play World of Warships but still watch the videos, and I know that applies to a lot of you out there, deep water torpedoes' gimmick are that they cannot hit destroyers because destroyers don't have a shallow enough or a deep enough draft. The torpedoes just pass harmlessly underneath them. That doesn't mean you don't see people in Pan-Asian destroyers trying to torpedo other destroyers and then complaining of hacks when they see the torpedoes passing harmlessly underneath them. I have seen that happen. But the Asashio's deep water torpedoes are different. They can't hit destroyers, they also can't hit cruisers. They can, however, hit battleships and aircraft carriers. Fortunately for the Asashio on the enemy team, and unfortunately for Rapture 70 here, half of his team are battleships and aircraft carriers. There were only two cruisers on each side in this battle. That's not important right now though, but just bear it in mind for the future. For now, as we can already see as well, there's an Amagi on the enemy team who appears to have already decided that he doesn't want to play the rest of this battle. But if you look at the minimap in the central channel, you can already see that there are at least two, spoiler, there are three, players on the enemy team who have either been watching far too many of my YouTube videos or far too many of Mr. Gibbons' Trenlass or Flambass's live streams. There's a Bayard and a Benson down there. And there's also going to be a Richelieu. He's not quite there yet, but don't worry, give him time. And we're about to get a perfect example of why doing this at the start of a Two Brothers match is an utterly terrible idea. The Amagi over there has definitely rage quit and is now a source of free damage. And he probably rage quit because he saw a quarter of his team steaming straight up the middle of Two Brothers right at the start of the match. Jingles, how do you know he's rage quit? How do you know he hasn't just had to go AFK for a few seconds or suffered a disconnect? Well, you can always tell the difference, because it's happened to me on a couple of occasions when I've suffered a disconnect. In fact, it happened just this weekend, and when I got back into the battle, my ship was still moving. But you don't just stop when you disconnect. In order to stop moving, you have to consciously bring the throttle to zero. Also, his guns are pointing in this direction, and yet he's not taking any shots. I suppose it's entirely possible that he may have had to go AFK for a few moments. Again, this is something that's happened to me, and I'm sure it's happened to many of you, where I start a game and then suddenly I hear somebody ring the doorbell and I have to go downstairs and take a delivery. But on those rare occasions when it does happen, and it doesn't happen often, but it does happen, 
If I'm in a safe position, I kill the throttle and then go and answer the door. And if I'm not in a safe position, like for example, sitting broadside on in plain view of a whole bunch of enemy battleships, I point the ship in a safe direction to give myself an even chance of still being alive when I can make it back to the keyboard. Something that the Amagi is very definitely not doing. So I'd say the balance of evidence would suggest that he has in fact rage quit. And he's gotten his wish, because he's dead and he's Rapture's first kill. Meanwhile, our friend in the Richelieu has just joined his two partners in crime in the Bayard and the Benson, and is about to provide a textbook example of why it's a bad idea to rush down the middle of two brothers at the start of the match, but it's an utterly catastrophic idea to push out of the channel down the middle of two brothers right at the start of the match. Because if you do it this early, well, the enemy team have had time to leave their spawn positions, but they've probably run into the rest of your teammates coming around either flank, which means that their advance down either flank has been slowed or stopped, unless they're stupid enough, and we're going to see examples of people who are stupid enough to continue pushing under those circumstances, but they're usually stopped in perfect positions like this to hammer your broadside as you poke out of that channel with either guns or torpedoes. And that's exactly what's happening to the Richelieu. The central channel is a bad spot to be, because it's a tight, narrow channel. You can flood that channel with torpedoes and you're pretty much guaranteed to hit something, even if it is hiding inside a smokescreen. There's no way to dodge air attacks, so if there's a carrier in play, and there is, you're basically a sitting duck. These are all kinds of different reasons why going down that channel is a bad idea. I mean, you can make it work, if you're good, and you know what you're doing, and when to do it, but most people aren't good, don't know what they're doing, and don't know when to do it. The only thing worse than going down that channel is coming out the other end this early. Oh wow, look at that, the Richelieu's dead. Well, who saw that one coming? Aside from every battleship on this side of the map and the friendly carrier, nobody. The Bayard and the Benson at least had the sense to stop at the mouth of the channel and not just rush out and die the way the Richelieu did. By the way, while we're on the subject of ships just rushing out and dying, because I talked earlier about, generally speaking at this stage of the battle, what you see here is usually what you get, particularly here on Two Brothers. There hasn't been enough time yet for one team or the other to really establish dominance on one flank, and so while some casualties have been inflicted because the stupid and the downright unlucky do tend to get culled quite early, nobody on either team has really yet committed to anything. And that's fine. I mean, the match is yet young. We're not even eight minutes in. But there's always somebody who gets caught, and it's usually a battleship. And I'm not saying that battleship players are any more dumb than players of any other class of ship, but, well, it's a bit more obvious when it's somebody in a battleship because they tend to get noticed from quite some distance. But there is always, sooner or later, and it's usually sooner, that we get somebody who confuses bravery with stupidity and doesn't appear to be able to look at the minimap and realise that they're sailing alone, unsupported, and often given a nice big flat broadside in front of four battleships, one destroyer, one cruiser and an aircraft carrier. And while it is often said that chicks dig scars and glory lasts forever, the Massachusetts certainly got an impressive collection of scars, but it was not particularly glorious. It was just dumb. Although I suppose that could have been his version of a rage quit, in which case, well, congratulations, he got what he wanted too. This isn't all strictly one-sided, by the way. I mean, if you've been paying attention, Rapture's team are losing ships at a pretty impressive rate as well. So while it might appear as if I'm just focusing the stupid pointer on the enemy team, I'm watching this from Rapture's perspective, and he's not watching his teammates, he's watching the enemy. So this is what we have to work with. Don't worry, I'm, I'm sure there are equally boneheaded decisions and plays being executed by Rapture's team as well. We're just not seeing it. I mean, it's rare that one team gets the monopoly on the stupid. Not impossible. <laughs> I said rare, not impossible. Um, hold on there. <laughs> I realise that sometimes it does happen, but it's not every game. Often matches aren't really decided by which team plays the best. 
although technically you could say that was true, but really it's more a case of which team makes the less mistakes. Oh, sorry, if I'm if I'm trying to be strictly correct in my English, which I realise is probably helpful for a lot of you non-English speakers out there who are trying to learn the language, the least number of mistakes. Here comes the enemy carrier. Oh, hang on a second. Okay, now, you see the Bismarck over there? Well, there are two Bismarcks, but you see the one that is definitely running away, and we can tell from 17 and a half kilometres away. Yeah, there's another Bismarck with him, who apparently cannot tell that the Bismarck three kilometres in front of him is turning around and running away. Because watch what the second Bismarck is about to do. Oh, and there's the Akazuki, who smokes up the instant he realises he's been spotted. Well, while we're waiting for the second of the two Bismarcks, have a look at the enemy carrier. I was about to make the comment of how this was going to be particularly tough for the enemy carrier because... Oh, hang on a second, the Margie's coming in from the left. Yeah, neither of these guys were aware that they, they were both focused on the enemy. Um, but hey, no harm. No foul. They're both angled pretty well against the 15-inch guns of both of those Bismarcks. I was about to make the comment that that poor cargo because he's in a rough spot right now. I mean, pretty much everybody surviving on Rapture's team is over here, so he's got to fly right into all of the AA fire from the entire team in order to try to get anything done. But then I saw where he is, and I suddenly lost all sympathy, <laughs> because... <laughs> because the Bismarck with all the health has done a ski, guys, I'm going home. The Bismarck without the health is currently hiding behind an island, and oh yeah, here come the Asashio torpedoes. Now I mentioned the Asashio earlier for a reason. Because its deep water torpedoes can only hit battleships or carriers. So that's a bit of a bummer. But to make up for it, as you just saw, they hit really hard. I mean, Rapture just lost 34,000 health from two torpedo hits. Just to put this into perspective for you, I can remember being in the Tier 7 Swedish destroyer. It's only one tier lower than the Asashio. And I hit a USS Dallas, which only has 28,000 health, with five of those Swedish torpedoes. And the Dallas survived. And then, as it happens, killed me. Rapture just lost 34,000 health, which is more than the entire health of the Dallas, and then some, to only two Asashio torpedoes. And the cargo. <laughs> <laughs> the only things closer to Rapture's team than that Karga are the destroyers. Although that's not strictly true now because the Karga's dead too. So I was feeling kind of sympathetic for the carrier there. Uh, because in order to do anything, he basically has to fly his aircraft into the AA of the entire remainder of Rapture's team. But then I saw the position he was in and I kind of lost all sympathy. Oh, hello. That Massachusetts just got taken out by the Bayard. Now, if you look at the Bayard's last reported position on the minimap, after he tried his ill-advised push up the middle right at the start of the match, he turned around, headed south, and was spotted at the southern end of the channel. Oh, there's the Asashio. You notice how quickly the battleships all shoot at the Asashio the second it gets spotted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a very good reason for that. Some fire coming in there from the Akazuki. He's also down there in that smoke screen. However, yeah, the Bayard has, um, he's back. He's thirsty for more. Some people just never learn their lesson the first time, do they? Which you could say is the general theme of this entire video. So let's see how well pushing back up the middle works for this guy. To be fair, he wasn't dumb enough to try to push right out at the start the way the Richelieu did. He did learn his lesson and he went back down to the southern end of the channel. But he's back again. And you know what? Rapture isn't even going to look at him because he's got slightly bigger fish to fry down here. The friendly carrier, on the other hand, Rapture's team's cargo, well, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, isn't it? Because when you're in that channel, you can't dodge air attacks. So the dive bombers were going in, and I think the Bayard only has about 4,000 health remaining. And... Wait for it. Oh, there are some more pesky Asashio deep water torpedoes. We're going to have to deal with that guy sooner rather than later. You can see the dive bombers going in. The Bayard's stuck in the channel. Looks like he's reversing. Going slow. Bombs away. Oh dear. How sad. Your dad. Anyway, back to the Bismarcks. 
You notice one of those Bismarcks has significantly more health than the other one. Yeah, that's him at the back, the one on 51,000 health. Have you noticed it's the one with less than 20,000 health who's leading the charge? <laughs> Um, and I don't know why, but it always is. Now, check this out. Because why fight two Bismarcks when you only have to fight one? Let's get this handy little island in the way, not just of the other Bismarck, but also all of those pesky torpedoes. And Rapture's fairly confident that the rest of his teammates can quickly hammer down an 18,000 health Bismarck He's turning the ship around, ready to angle against the 15-inch guns of the second Bismarck. Launches his fighter, never know, might get lucky and spot one of the destroyers. Angles away from the second Bismarck while also making sure that he's got plenty of island between himself and any further torpedoes. And oh, look at that. Somebody spotted one of the destroyers. Well, I think that is definitely a far more threatening target when you're in a battleship at least. Oh, and there we go. Kill number four. Meanwhile, check out Bismarck number one. Hasn't worked out too well for him thus far. Although, to be fair, it has worked out slightly better than it did for the Massachusetts at the beginning of the battle, who tried doing exactly the same thing. And he is actually going to get into cover behind that small island before Rapture can swing his turrets around. Unfortunately, because he doesn't want to sail out in front of the guns on the other side of the island, he's forced to come to a stop in a very narrow channel, with dive bombers closing in on him. <laughs> so, <laughs> and by some miracle, the carrier didn't kill him. Guess what? What would be the worst possible thing that you could do right now if you were in Bismarck number one? Because he's beaten off the carrier's attacks. He is on a bare sliver of health, of course, but he has beaten off the carrier's attacks. What would be the worst thing he could do right now? I mean, there aren't many good things that he can do, because he's in a very bad spot, for which he only has himself to blame. But what would be the worst thing that he could do? You won't have to wait long. Yep, here it comes. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. And there's the Kraken. And that just leaves the Akizuki and Bismarck number two. Unfortunately, and I'm not proud of it, but we are going to have to witness some cruelty to small boats here. Although he doesn't spank the Akazuki immediately, but he does get himself the Confederate award for scoring those couple of hits. But well, the Akazuki is inside secondary battery range of a Vladivostok, <laughs> which is not great. And there's kill number six. That just leaves contestant number 12 in Bismarck number two. Who has basically thrown in the towel at this point? He comes out and he's not quite giving a big flat broadside, but he's given a bigger flatter broadside with every passing second. <laughs> and <laughs> he probably just wants it all to be over as quickly as possible. And Rapture is only too happy to oblige. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here with the text. I'll hazard a guess. I'm almost certainly wrong, but is that Korean? Let me know in the comments if you can actually... I mean, I know it says victory and so on and so on, but yeah, you, you get what I mean. So, all of the stupid possible in World of Warships in one compact battle. Of course, it helps that it's two brothers. This map is something of a stupid magnet. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> hey, as long as we can all laugh about it, that's what matters. Take care, folks. Stay safe. And I'll catch you next time.